In this video, we'll be looking at chi-squared tests of independence. So remember, this is our diagram of what the general idea is for a chi-squared test. The technique is allowing us to make this decision here. And the independence and homogeneity tests, the expected values are going to come from probability calculations where events are assumed to be independent. That will be the null hypothesis. And then if that null hypothesis is rejected, then our conclusion would be that the events are not independent. So our second test, independence and homogeneity. The expected values are going to come from predictions if the factors are independent of one another. And as you'll recall, the probability of A and B was the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B if A and B were independent. The way we're going to do this is we're going to create a grid with categorical variables for rows and columns and put numbers of individuals that have each combination in the boxes. So as an example here, we can have a set of rows for hair color. So these individuals have black hair, these individuals have blonde hair. Set of columns for eye color, brown eyes, blue eyes. We would have a two by two grid. In this box, we would put the number of individuals with brown eyes and black hair. In this box, the number of individuals with blue eyes and black hair etc. And then we're going to use the assumption of independence to make a prediction on how many individuals we would expect in each box. Right? If these things are independent, the probability of brown and black would be the probability of brown multiplied by the probability of black. This row as a proportion of all the rows could give us the probability of black. This column as a proportion of all the columns could give us the probability of brown. And then if we have the probabilities of each, we could multiply and then multiply by the total number of individuals to get the total number, right? So the total number of brown-eyed, black-haired individuals we expect, if eye color and hair color are independent, would be the probability we calculate here multiplied by the total number of individuals. As another example, are the heights of individuals and their gender independent of one another or not? So the null hypothesis would be that height and gender are independent. The alternative is they are not independent. And if you think about it, we kind of know the answer to this already, right? Obviously, height and gender are not independent. But when we set up our statistical test, the null hypothesis is always going to be that they are independent, even if we don't expect that to be true. So an example of a test of independence comes from this scenario here. Researcher interested in whether men are more likely to be taller than women or whether there's no relationship between height and gender. In other words, whether the two traits, height and gender, are independent of one another. So there's this scenario where the researcher gathers some data. And in fact, this is example number 12 on the course website. So there's the YouTube address. It's also linked to on the course website on the examples page. So I recommend you go check out that video, and that one shows how to get the values that are on the next slide. So this is the result of the example shown in the other video. We get a chi-squared value of 21.334, one degree of freedom. These are the critical values for one degree of freedom, and we can see the 21.334 is off the edge past this critical value that corresponds to an alpha value of 0 0.0005. Therefore, the p-value is less than 0 0.0005. And so our conclusion would be to reject the null hypothesis. And remember, the null hypothesis is that gender and height were independent of one another. Therefore, rejecting the null hypothesis gives us the conclusion that gender and height are not independent of one another. There's the p-value. And of course, we could like look at the values here and see that it's basically because males are taller than females. As I mentioned in the video, but I'll reiterate here, actual two by two tables use a slightly different chi-squared value. That's the Yates correction. Um, the technically correct chi-squared value would be about 20. And in fact, there's another technique or procedure used for two by two tables called the odds ratio that we'll talk about in the next lecture.